never believed in angels and fairy tales. No matter how much I wanted it, nothing I ever really wished for came true. But I never stopped wishing. Maybe this Christmas would be different. Lana? Coming. that right as the door is starting to close. Could you hit three, please? That's the maternity board. My first grandchild. Congratulations. Well, isn't that a perfect way to start the day? A girl, eight pounds, four ounces. <laughs> Are you getting out? No, not this one. Hi, we're here to see Barry Thompson. Thank you. You both keep holding your mama while you're visiting. Real tight, okay? She's not our mother. It's okay. <laughs> here you go. Come on. Did you bring me something? Yeah. Your mom needs a smoke. <laughs> That's a good girl. Thanks, honey. Where did you get those? That's a really great thing to teach her. Don't you start with me. I got enough of these cops, doctors. Uh, don't even get me started. Well, they saved your life, so you could be a little nicer. This is a jail, Emily. Okay, I'm in jail. <laughs> Still carrying around your baseball glove? So what do you hear from your lawyer? Nobody tells me anything. I mean, do you know when you're going to get out again or even if... What? You're... What? What? You keep asking me a question. You keep asking me questions. I don't know, Emily. I don't know. Um. Okay. You know what? You've got to get this together because we've gone through this over and over. I know. I'm gonna get it together this time. So give me a break. I'm gonna do it for real. I can't do this anymore. I don't know how many times I've heard you say that. I mean, how many times have I dropped everything? Driven all this way to take care of the kids, to bail you out. All right, fine. Yeah. If it's a problem, just tell me, okay? Yeah. And then what? Who's gonna take care of them? If it's not me, who? I don't feel so hot now. I'm just gonna go. Barry. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry too, okay? We're both sorry. You guys hang tough. Eat something, all right? Yeah. You look really thin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Lanny. Tell Jack I'm here, okay? Okay? Don't forget. Come on. Who's Jack? Nobody. Your boyfriend? He brings her drugs. Okay. Uh, you two go stand over there with that nice lady, okay? What? When are you gonna get it? You almost OD'd <sighs> this time. You were dying when they found you, your own kids. Don't you dare lecture me. I don't need you to save me. If you got a problem with this, go back to Atlanta. This is my life. No, this is not your life. This is their life. You have any idea what this is doing to them? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? We survived, didn't we? We've been locked out of the apartment. Did you know that? You haven't paid the rent in six months. Times are tough. Or haven't you noticed? 
Where do you suggest we stay tonight? I mean, where should we go to sleep? You're their mother. Give me a break. Okay. We'll be back tomorrow, sis. And how old are you now, JT? He's almost six. Hmm. Is there something I can do for you? Oh, Miss Thompson. Emily Thompson? Yes. Ruth Doyle, Child Services. She's scaring JT. <sighs> Honey, there's nothing to be scared of. He's afraid she's going to take us away. That's not going to happen. Uh, look, the last 24 hours have really... Let's talk privately for a moment, shall we? Miss Russell can watch the children for us. Miss Russell, would you watch Alana and JT for a minute? Come on. Foster care is in their best interest, and right now my concern is for the children. They've missed school, unhealthy living conditions, evictions, abandonment. There's a history of neglect here that borders on child abuse. We feel that a foster home would be a safer but environment. But I'm their aunt, and I'm here to take care of them. Miss <laughs> Thompson, I'm sure that you mean well, but you have no job here. I'm going to get one. I'm going back to school to be a nurse. I'm going to do that. I'm sure that you will. But right now you have no permanent address, you have no bank account, no savings account. Well, that's because I've given everything I had to try to help these kids. You know? Yeah, and your sister spent it all on boyfriends and drugs. Are you saying it would be better if I didn't try no, to help? what I'm saying... Look, what I'm saying to you is, we're dealing with a Rhode Island jurisdiction and you have no history with us. Well, I have a history with those children. Isn't that more important? <sighs> Miss Doyle, Ruth, you can't give these kids to strangers when I'm here now, ready to do what needs to be done. I'd really like to help you. Then do it. Well, if you can find a job, open a bank account, establish yourself. All right, that takes time. Exactly my point. Until then, I have superiors I have to report to and guidelines that I have to work with. Yeah. I know this system. Barry and I were raised in it, and that is why I am begging you if... <sighs> that little boy, he doesn't even talk anymore except to his sister. If you split them up, he does not have a chance. He needs his family. We make every attempt to keep the siblings together. But you can't promise. No, no, I can't. Ms. Doyle, do you have a minute? I'm afraid it's urgent. It's just a minute. Look, for now, this is the best choice for everybody. Mm. If uh, you'd like to take the time to explain it to them yourself, Maybe the transition will be easier. I'll be right back. Hey, take your brother's hand. Come on. Come with me. Let's go. JT was right about the lady, wasn't he? Walking on Where are we going? I don't know. Just get in the car. Come on. It's anybody's guess. Bethlehem. Well, couldn't be that lost. Here's the thing, we've got $60 and some change. It's gonna take us two nights to get to Atlanta from here. Will we have to sleep in the car? The car? How many times have you guys had to sleep in the car? Some. It's okay for me, but JT gets cold. Oh, there'll be no car camping tonight, I'll say. 
The temperature's dropping like a barrel over Niagara. Hi, Summer. In a better place in the world to sleep than a 1950 DeSoto sportsman. Parked high on a bluff, windows down, sweet breezes blowing in. Ah. I used to be an adventurer when I was your age. What's a DeSoto? It's a car, sweetheart. A honey of a car. Do you know of a place we might get a room for the night? Oh, there's Holly McBride's Inn over on Fielders. Big rooms, fireplaces, four poster. We just need something uh, simple. A motel? Oh, closest one is way out on the highway. 40 or 50 miles of back road to get there. And even if you do, they'll probably be full up. But if you're going to head in that direction, you'll go right past the town square. You might want to check out the old Pierce house. Oh, great Victorian thing. Town's really proud of it. It's right across from the angel statue. Is there really an angel? Of course there's an angel. Don't you know there are angels everywhere? This one watches over that house. It's been empty ever since Miriam Pierce died, oh, seven years ago. She left the whole thing to her niece. Never came to claim it. I'm sorry, it's uh, getting late. We gotta get on the road. But uh, keep the change. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Come on, kids, let's go. And drive safely. And don't forget to check out the Pierce house. Maeve! <clears throat> Maeve! Maeve, can a guy get a cup of coffee here? All right. Did you just keep your shirt on? Fresh coffee on the way. Unlighted high octane. Uh, high octane. Uh, right. Please, please start. Where are we going to sleep tonight? I'm not sure, but we'll figure something. See there? Everything's gonna be fine. We just gotta get through the night because things always look better in the morning, right? It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Hardly see the road. It's the angel, just like she said. What are you doing? I want you both to stay here up right now. to our room for the night. They'll arrest us. Alana, look, we can't afford the inn. We're running on fumes and it's freezing. Nobody's gonna know. It's just one night. And things will look better in the morning. They just about have to, don't they? And when your mom and I were little, we'd sleep like that. Spoons. And we'd hold hands so we wouldn't get lost in the dark. Were you scared? Sometimes, yeah. 
So we'd pretend that all the bad things around us were just dreams. And then we'd make up stories about what it was like in our real life. What kind of stories did Mama make up? Hmm. One time your mom pretended she was a dog catcher who'd round up all the sad dogs who didn't have anyone. And she'd drive them to this special park, this beautiful green place where people would go for picnics. She just let them go free so they could live happily ever after. Leftover ham sandwiches. I wish there was a park like that for sad people. Well, we don't need that park, Lanny. We got each other. And I'm gonna work it so we stay together no matter what. I knew it was too early. We're so sorry to disturb you. We saw the car and the smoke from the chimney. After all these years, we're just about giving up hope you'd ever come back. It was my worry wart sister who insisted on seeing you first thing, Pumpkin. She thought you'd appreciate some water and gas. You turned on the water and gas? Oh, it was nothing. Corinna put in our new laundry room all by herself. Me? I'm not so handy, but I do bake. And I brought you some breakfast rolls just out of the oven. She bakes like this all the time. It's a wonder I'm not 300 pounds and in a carnival side chef. <laughs> They're cinnamon. You used to love them. <laughs> well, of course I did. <laughs> and just look how you have grown. I mean, the last time we saw you, you were only six or seven, so it's not surprising. But pretty is a picture. Oh. You haven't even had time to uncover the furniture yet. Let us help you. Uh, don't worry about that. I'll, I'll do that later. You don't even remember us, do you? Agatha and Corinna, your Aunt Miriam's friends from across the street? Of, of course I do. I used to come over for these cinnamon rolls. <laughs> that is so sweet of you. You know, I would ask you to stay for a while, but actually I... Uh, oh, we understand. You have to get settled. And you'll need Gerald Foster say so to get the electric on. At Miriam's attorney? Mr. Foster, yes. <laughs> He's on vacation, but he'll be so excited to see you again when he gets back. Well, when do you think that might be? Could be any time. But don't you worry. We won't let him surprise you the way we did. As soon as we hear from him, we'll let you know. Please. <laughs> of course. He came to see you when dear Miriam died, didn't he? So he won't be at all surprised how pretty you are now. Mm. You know, you could call Jimmy Kilgore over at Power and Light as soon as they open. Jimmy Kilgore. I taught him third grade and passed him. <laughs> So he owes me big time. Mm. <laughs> now, you may think we're losing our minds, but we can't remember your name. <laughs> we always called you Pumpkin, but we guess you're a little grown up for that now. <laughs> it's, uh, Emily. Emily Thompson. Emily! I knew that all along. Oh. Well, it's been a long time. <laughs> welcome to Bethlehem, Emily. And welcome back. And when you get a breath, you come on over and we'll catch up over my mince pie. I will, yes. Thanks again for the rolls. Oh, you're welcome, dear. Watch the ice there, Agatha. I'm slipping with toast. <sighs> okay, since the water's on, you two can go wash up, put everything back like it was, and we will get on the road before someone else comes by, okay? Mm. Come on, come on, grab it and go. Go, go, go. OK. 
Okay, you guys be really quiet, right? Just look forward. Good morning. Hello. Car trouble. How's your antifreeze? Oh, I think it's more than that. The engine's been acting up for a while. Let's pop the hood. I'll take a look. No, really, I couldn't ask you to. <laughs> you don't have to ask. It's all part of the job, you know? Kittens and trees, flat tires. It's a full life. I saw you at the diner last night, didn't I? Yes, we got into town lights. Wow. I think your spark plugs are probably shot. Spark plugs? You think that might be it? Well, uh, with an engine this, um, old, I don't know, it could be, uh, bad points, your timing might be off, you might have oil in your combustion chamber, uh, you know what, why don't we just get Mitch over at the garage and take a look at it? Uh, you weren't leaving town, were you? No, uh, we were just going to the market because there's nothing in the house, so, oh. uh, you're more than glad to give you a lift. I'm Nathan. Oh. Nathan Blair. I'm sort of the long arm of the law here in Bethlehem. Emily. Thompson, right? Uh, your neighbors, the two sisters. Yes. They called me. Explained the whole thing to me. They're sort of our local information superhighway. But they didn't get to meet the kids. Yeah, those are my kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't think they came with the car. I... Tell you what. Why don't you gather the kids together, and I'll call Mitch, and he'll be over here by noon. Great. Thank you, officer. This is really, really important, okay? We need to think of this as a game until I can get the car fixed. What kind of game? Um, game of pretend. I want you to pretend that I'm your mom. Okay, so you call me mom, and uh, if anybody asks you anything, you just say, uh, your mom doesn't let you talk to strangers, okay? Now look, I know it's really bad that I'm asking you to fib, but I don't think we have a choice right now. It's okay, everybody lies. No, everybody doesn't lie. And as soon as we get through this, we won't either, okay? What do you say? Can we play this game and play it really, really well? Kids are about the quietest kids I've ever met. Mom says we can't talk to strangers. <laughs> I say you got a very smart mom. You'll find this town's a little more trusting than most. Yeah. Where are you all from, anyway? We're from Providence. With the Georgia plates? Well, I... We used to live in Atlanta, moving back and forth. It's complicated. Hey, J JT, what do you got there? You a baseball fan? J.T. Snow is a great infielder. Came with the Yankees, 92. Is that where you got your nickname? It's his real name. His dad gave it to him. <laughs> your husband's a big fan then, huh? Hmm. Did anyone ever tell you you ask a lot of questions? Occupational answer. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So where does grocery shopping fall into that job description of yours? Is that... Above car repair, below pet rescue. All right, you think I'm kidding, but uh, this place has been a nice change for me. Back home, I was. You're not uh, from here? No. Born in Illinois. High school, college, eight years on the force in Chicago. But seven years too many. So when this job opened up, I ran for it. Can we get a kick, Emily? Sorry. Well, um, mom doesn't like it when I call her that, but I do because. It makes me feel older, but she thinks it makes me sound fresh. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I tried it with my dad once, and he didn't like it any more than your mom does. No. No. <laughs> it's okay, Lanny. Hey, cheer up. Okay. Hey, your eyes are too pretty to look sad. What do you say we get that cake? My treat. Absolutely not. Uh, you've done enough for us already.
Hey. It's a cake you wanted. I didn't buy it. It was probably him. Do you want to tell me what's bothering you? Do you do not like Officer Blair? Or... Is that true about JT's father? Did he really name him? Well, your mom did. But apparently it was his idea. She thought it would keep him around. So, that's what she called him. What about my father? Did he name me? Let's not get into this right now. No, we want to know. Well, I don't know, Lanny. I don't think he even, uh... I don't think he even met you. But you got your eyes from him. And they're really pretty. Just like Officer Blair said. I can't believe anything a policeman says anyway. So how long do you think it'll take to fix it? It depends on what I find. I ought to know something by this evening. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to start and go. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into that start and go business. Yeah. Don't worry. If it's going to take a while, I got a loaner I can let you have. Not too stylish, but it gets around. Thanks. I'm only asking you for the good of the children. But you don't know what's good for my kids. Nobody around here knows what's good for us. Oh, they know what they're doing around here. Oh, really? Well, I wish I had your faith. And I wish that you would tell me what your sister did with Alana and JT. If I knew, which I don't, I wouldn't tell you. Because they're better off with her than anything you people have to offer. Barry, what about relatives? We don't have any. We told you. Okay, we're alone. It's me and my sister. Check your records. You don't get it. They're already with the best person for them. I guess we'll have to alert the police, have them start a search. I'll have to pull a photo from the Atlanta DMV. Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, Emily. I hate to bother you again, but since you don't have a phone as yet, Mitch at the garage called our house. Yes, yes, please come in out of the cold. Power still isn't on, but the fire pumps. Jimmy hasn't turned that on yet. I should have flunked him when I had the chance. Well, hello. I guess you haven't met... Your children, Helena and JT. Uh, you've been talking to Officer Blair. And he was right about them. They're adorable and so handsome. So you said Mitch called. He said you have a crack in something called an engine block. Is that bad? I don't know exactly, but it's... Not good. He said it'd probably be easier to buy a new car. A new car? Now, that's not so bad. A car loan would be a snap. You've got this house for collateral. Yeah, I wish it were that simple. <laughs> well, if you're really attached to it, Mitch will fix it. He said it would cost about $800. Hmm. Is that a problem? Right now, it might as well be 8000 <laughs> Good afternoon. It is as cold as can be. Yeah, weather must have affected our fax machine. We haven't got a fax in two days, and that can't be right. Anybody seen the instruction book? Not me. Oh, Sadie, is there any coffee? We've had this little talk. I don't do coffee. I'm liberated. I know, I know. Uh, I wasn't asking you to make it. I, I just wanted to know if there was any already made. Oh. No. Well, here's the problem. There's no paper in the facts, Sadie. We're out of paper. I'll need a requisition form for that. What's this? License and registration information you asked for. Emily Thompson, Atlanta, Georgia. Not so much as a parking ticket. That's is, good. Is that Miriam's niece? What? <laughs> that wasn't a good enough reference for you? 
<laughs> well, you can take the cop out of Chicago. It was just a feeling. Right. Jeannie over at the market said she saw that feeling firsthand. The woman is new in town. I, I'm just helping out. Mm-hmm. When you're ready to talk, you know where to find me. <laughs> Couldn't we just take the loaner car? He could keep ours. No, as long as the attorney isn't in town, our secret is safe. And we're not hurting anyone by staying here, but taking someone else's car... No, we can't do that to someone. So what are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna get a job, earn the money, and pay for the repairs. Well, that could take forever. You know, we're gonna get caught. The police are probably already looking for us. Which is why I think it's better that we stay here rather than out on the road. I mean, no one knows we're here. We'll be really careful, okay? Let me get your plates. And Emily? Lights! <gasps> and heat! I think Agatha and Corinna happened. And you know what this means? What? We don't need a fire. It's gonna be warm enough to sleep in a bedroom tonight. Our own bedroom? Why not? We got seven to choose from. Woohoo! Wait for me! <laughs> Please let this last. I'm, I'm looking for Officer Blair. Oh, he doesn't come into work till noon today. Um, you must be Emily. <laughs> I know everyone else in town. <laughs> Sadie Miller. Hi. <laughs> Fresh coffee in about five minutes, if you'd like a cup. I only fix it when the boys aren't here. <laughs> so now's your chance. <laughs> I don't know what they do to it. Thanks, but uh, I just came by to see if he might know of a job opening for a woman who needs to make $800 in a hurry. Oh, the car. Oh, I heard. You know, if it's a job you want, two of Holly McBride's best people ran off to elope. And this is the end's busiest season till spring. That's where I'd start. Well, check it out. Into the street, and you just take a left, and you tell Holly that I sent you. Thank you so much. Oh. Your little girl would like that, I bet. Hmm. Alana, isn't it? Yes, she would. You know, uh, we're having an open house here at the station Christmas Eve. Everybody just kind of drops by. Nathan's playing Santa this year. Oh, I bet he loves that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> he doesn't know yet. Can I tell him you stopped by? Yeah, sure. Great. That thing is going to be the death of me. I don't know how Santa does it year after year. <laughs> I was saying, you're some kind of lucky charm walking in here today. Oh, that's a first. I don't think anyone's ever thought of me as lucky before. When can you start? Start? Uh, don't you need references or an application or something? You're a friend of Nathan's. And I'm a desperate woman. Who elopes these days? People in love, I guess. <laughs> Wonderful for them. But I've got a business to run. So if you don't mind making beds and wrestling with that flu from time to time. No, no. Don't mind at all. <laughs> Anything. 
so I start first thing tomorrow morning. You sure don't waste <laughs> any time. And why would she? She counts some hard-working Yankee stock, just like her Aunt Miriam. Miriam never worked a day in her life. Wouldn't know a lug wrench from a crescent if her life depended on it. <laughs> you will let us watch the children while you work, won't you? They're upstairs now, coloring away, and they're such a joy. Oh. I really appreciate that, actually. They're such good company, and they can come here every day after school. Have you talked to Principal Blevins at the elementary yet? That's my old school. Oh, no, I, I actually hadn't even thought about it. Well, come right on in, dear. We were just congratulating the newest member of Bethlehem's workforce. Hey, hey, you got the job at Holly's. That's great. <laughs> Sadie said you wanted to see me. We did? Yeah. Oh, right, we did. She said it was urgent. Yes, yes, uh, we needed to see you because... Uh, well, I guess my mind's gone south for the winter. <laughs> Agatha? Uh, because I made extra jars of that vegetable soup you like so much. Agatha's soup? The soup was urgent. It was hot at the time. I'll get it. It'll make a fine dinner. Yeah. Of course, there's quite a lot of it. Enough for two, at least. Uh, Corinna, dear, I I'm not sure I can do this by myself. Oh, uh, well, perhaps you could show Emily where the school is. <laughs> Oh, you're getting the kids set up at school. You're putting down roots. Oh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot to do before I can really. Oh, start. you need their birth certificates and school records. Yeah, if I can find them. This move has been really confusing. No, I just have their old school. Send them here, and then what was that Providence or Atlanta? You know what? With the car and the job, and I, I just don't think hey, I can really. I got it. I'll right come now, by. I'll pick know? up you and the kids in the morning, and we'll get the whole thing done by no. noon. And... Thank you. Thank you. Nathan, is there anybody here? Can I help you? Didn't mean to startle you. I was in the powder room. No, I just, um, I saw the light, and Hank's usually got everything locked up tight by now. Yes, well, Mr. Harrison doesn't have my workload. No. <laughs> You're new here. Yes. Hey, um, where is Hank, uh, Mr. Harrison? At home, I suppose. <laughs> While I'm here tidying up, trying to get things organized, everything in its place. Can I get you something? Oh, no, no, thanks. Um... Yes. Could you look up an old deed for me? Pierce House. Miriam's place. That's an easy one. In fact, I was just about to put that book in its file. There it is. M through T. I hear her niece finally came back. There you go. Miriam Pierce. It's not good for a house like that to be empty. It should be filled with life. Family. Doesn't mention anything about a niece. Oh, that would be in the probate amendment at Gerald Foster's law office. He's still on vacation, you know. Right. Well, I'll drop by his office in the morning. Maybe they can look it up for me. Now, we might get lucky. And there might just be a copy of it right here. Emily Thompson. I love that. It says Emily Thompson. I love that it says that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't take much to make you happy, does it? <laughs> Just a little ink on a page. Don't work too late tonight. In fact, I think you should go home and enjoy yourself. I'd just like to do that. <laughs> mm. Oh! Hey, I just wanted to say, um, welcome to... Bethlehem.
Hi. <laughs> Hi. Did you win the lottery or something? Better. Um. Here. For us? Yeah. I'm feeling Christmassy all of a sudden. Come in. Thanks. I mean, is it something in the water here? I mean, doesn't anyone even get a little cranky? No. Cranky's illegal here in Bethlehem. It's right up there with jaywalking and cheating at Scrabble. I, I think, in fact, we have the toughest Scrabble laws in the country. Alana, JT, come look. What's that? It's a wreath. You put it on the door. Did you ever see a Christmas wreath before? I've seen them. I just never had one before. Well, you know what? I've got something else for both of you. Yeah. Come here. JT, why don't you open this one? We want you to open it. Okay. I guess I can do that. An angel. If you tell her your wishes, she can help make them come true. You, uh, you put her on your tree. Um, well, we never had a tree either. Never. We, uh, moved around a lot, so, you know, trees. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, JT. Well, maybe that could be your first wish. A tree. Come here, JT. Almost impossibly kind. I wish there was something I could do. Uh, some way to. No, I. Uh... Yeah, I've I've got a couple more deliveries to make before um, before it gets too late. Good night. Yes, thank you. Supplies. Pens, pencils, notepads, paper clips, paper for the fax. Now we'll see what we've been missing. Probably the usual notices. Garage sales, apartments for rent. So, what's the latest on you and the niece? There's no latest. We're just friends. Mm, you forget who you're talking to. You can fool Howie, and you maybe can even fool yourself, but I know what's going on. You care to tell me what that might be? Ooh, I think you know. Sadie, I'm not gonna play. I've got work. And we got faxes coming through. Readout says two dozen of them. Garage sale? No. Lost dog. Hey, I know this pooch. Well, how are you just know everyone? I got a fire hydrant in front of my house. Well, that explains it. Bethlehem Police Department, can I help you? Yeah, that'll be here. Christmas Eve. Call the principal and told him your records were being sent. He won't ask again until we've left, so you don't have anything to worry about, okay? Now, I'm not gonna be able to pick you guys up from school today, so you'll go to the system straight away, and I'll come get you after I'm done with work. You got that? Now, if anybody asks you any questions, Eat up. I'll be right back. 
Come on. Yes? I think you've been expecting me. Uh, Mr. Foster, attorney at law? Ah. Uh, Did I call a bad time? No, 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 Mr. Foster. I, I, I have been expecting you. Actually, you look a lot younger than I'd imagined. You imagined? Well... We did meet once as children, I think, but my uncle, Gerald Foster, he, uh, he took care of all the paperwork and all, so... I... And your... Sorry, Alexander. Alexander Foster. Al Alexander. <laughs> Not Gerald. Of course. Please, come in. Uh, uh, Don't worry. Thank you. Oh, and children. You've got all sorts of surprises for us, don't you? <laughs> Alana, JT, this is Mr. Foster. Say hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, well, that's a beautiful tree. And this Hi. house, it's been empty for so long. I'd forgotten what life was like inside it. Oh, I'd drop by to tell you that Uncle Gerald is anxious to see you again. But I'm afraid it'll be another two weeks. You see... He's found himself on a warm beach somewhere and can't pry himself away. But he will be back uh, Christmas Eve, just in time for the town's open house. See, <laughs> Uncle Gerald, he thinks they can't do it without him. But you know Uncle Gerald. Oh, yes, I know Uncle Gerald. So, we have two whole weeks. That's just wonderful. <laughs> so wonderful. Knowing he'll be back so soon. Two weeks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, <laughs> you are eager to see him again, aren't you? Oh. Don't you ever take a break? Hey. Ah. Now the uh, sisters wanted the place looking especially festive this year to keep up with the Addisons down the street. Uh. This whole neighborhood decorating competition has gotten completely out of hand. Ah. If you ask me. Did you want to? Uh, sure. But nobody does. Does Miriam have any lights? I mean, does she used to decorate the house? Huh. What I've heard, she must have had a couple of miles of lights hidden up there somewhere. Really? <sighs> hey, before I pick up the kids, would you mind helping me look for them? I, uh, you know, I just don't want to disappoint them. Yeah, sure. Thank you. That's a lot of lights. <laughs> it's about enough to cause a statewide blackout. <laughs> you no, know, I think there are more lights in those boxes. Could you check those? I'm going to yeah. try to put some of these in. What's wrong? Uh, wrong? This doesn't feel right, snooping through all this stuff. Well, you act like it isn't yours. Well, you know, it isn't. It was Miriam's. I just inherited it. Well, it's like the woman never threw anything away. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> I think some of these were yours. Want to dig through them? Relive some memories? No. Uh, my past isn't something I'm particularly proud of, so I don't really want to go digging right now. Okay. Sorry. Didn't mean to. You know, probably. I know. It's okay. Oh. Look at that. She's a beauty. I wanted to be a ballerina when I was a kid. You know, I think that's the first truly personal thing you said to me. Well, uh, took three lessons and then we moved. And it didn't happen. Nothing else to tell. You know, I don't believe it. I think there is more to tell. I think there's a lot to tell. And I know for sure there's a lot I'd like to hear about you. Kids are probably wondering what happened to me. You're doing it again. You know, you're pulling away, and I, I just don't think you want to. I think you want to be close. And it's like you're afraid. It's nothing. No, don't say it's nothing. Say it's none of my business. But don't say it's nothing, because I know better. Just thinking about you. 
mean, you are so beautiful and you're so real. Uh -huh. You're so good with your kids. Nathan, too. No, it's, it's true, really. I've waited my whole life to feel this way about somebody. Yeah, but you don't know. No, I do know. I know how I feel. And I know that I trust you. Do you know that I'm leaving? What? In two weeks. Why? Because JT, he needs to go to a special school. And I mean, they both do. You know, Atlanta has reading problems. And Wait, wait, wait. When did you decide to do this? I know exactly how you feel. Because I feel the same way. But it's not possible. No, please, please don't make it more difficult than it already is. Okay. Okay. Okay, you're determined to leave. I hear you. But give me the two weeks. <laughs> That's crazy. Probably, but I want you to give us a chance. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you'll change your mind. Maybe I'll change it for you. I don't know. Anything. Anything can happen. I just want two weeks with you. Mm -hmm. And if that's all it is, at least we had that. What do you say? What do you think? It's like an apartment store, isn't it, JT? I'm so happy. It's like the old days when Miriam lived here. This house has been dark far too long. It's incredible. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh. Did you just file these faxes without even looking at them? You're the fax man, Hallie. I figured you'd get around to the job sooner or later. I've got a job for you, too. Oh, what's in the box? Well, you know, Mr. Dearborn moved to California with his nephew. Mm -hmm. Did you know there was a winter carnival in Marshall last week? Yes, but what, is, what does that have to do with this? Well, remember, every Christmas Eve, he used to be our Santa here at the station. Right. No, no, yes. no, yes, no. yes, oh, no, no, yes, please. Come on, we'll get you some padding, we'll glue on a beard. No one will ever guess. Sadie, I don't you think Santa's more of a more of a howie thing? I'm allergic to the fur, big guy. Sadie, please, I can't. Please, pretty please. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, throw out the face. I got it. Paper Forget towels. the coffee and concentrate on the names of your reindeers. The kids expect that sort of thing. Repeat after me. <clears throat> Dasher. Dasher. Dancer. Dancer. Prancer. Prancer. <laughs> Comet. Human. Oh, Bethlehem Police Department. Oh, Barry. I'm so sorry. We have five years. You know the crazy thing? I don't even blame them. Man, I have blown it. I have trashed my life. Oh, my kids hate me, don't they? No, they don't. We talk about you every day. You're doing good. JT is talking more. Not just to Lanny. No, you should hear him. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Take good care of him, okay? Yeah, you know I will. Hey. I love you. And I love them, you know? 
I doubt that for a minute. I just keep telling myself that all of this, I'm missing them. It's just the price I gotta pay for messing up, you know? One minute. Hey, I gotta go, um... Listen, you gotta be careful because they've been asking about you and I told them I have no idea where you are, which is true, so it's good that I don't, but just be safe, okay? Okay. Do me a favor. Sure. Will you give him a kiss tonight and tell him it's from me? Yeah, of course I will. You get through okay? Fine, thanks. I've got uh, 200 more for you. The rest will be coming soon. I wasn't worried. Me and the car is sort of bonded through all this. By the time I'm finished, she'll do more than start and go for you. She'll purr when you need her back. Oh, uh, well, we're leaving in a week, so any time before that. Sorry to hear it happen. We were kind of hoping the town would grow on you. But you got to do what you got to do, huh? Yeah. Possible. Anything's possible. It's not true. Why do you say that? I just know. Well, this book is about things that weren't possible and how they happened after all. You know, when I was your age, I went to Mars. Did you know that? No, you didn't. No, I took a submarine ride to the bottom of the sea. And I joined a pirate crew on a hunt for buried treasure, just like the treasure hunt you were on that brought you here. And I did it all in books. Because in books... Anything is possible. When M Mary Lennox was sent... 
useful way and looked as many of them had never seen him. And by his side, with his head up in the air and his eyes full of la laughter, walked as strongly and steadily as any boy in Yorkshire. Master Colin. <laughs> that is fantastic. I'm proud of you. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Oh. Agatha, it's only a story. She cries at supermarket openings. <laughs> this is the best book I ever read. Yep. And there are plenty more where that came from. Nathan says Santa might give me a book of my own when we see him Christmas Eve. Well, I'm sure if you want a book for Christmas, you'll get one. But, you know, we won't be here then. We're leaving the day after tomorrow, remember? No. Helena, you know we have to go. No! You promised her Santa on Christmas Eve. How could you give her that hope? You hadn't said anything more about leaving. I thought maybe... We, we... talked about it. We had a deal. Emily. I'm going to get my daughter. I'll come with you. No, please. Alana? Alana? That's what you wanted. It's not what I want anymore. I want to stay here where it's nice and people like me. And we have a bedroom and a house. A house that's not ours. I mean, Mr. Foster's going to come back and he knows we have no right to it. But maybe we could fool him too. But what if we could? I mean, what kind of life would that be, you know? Be better than what we had. Running all the time, sleeping in shelter. Nathan's nights. You could marry him and we could be a family. Maybe you could adopt us. It's just not possible. Anything is possible. Nathan said so. Mm. Was that a snowstorm? I've never seen the likes of it here. Uh, ten miles out, snow as deep as a blue ox. And here in Bethlehem? Go figure, Maeve. Go figure is right. It doesn't make sense, Emily. The kids are both doing fine here. They're doing better. They're fine. We're fine here. We agreed it would be two weeks. I know what we said, but tell me. Tell me nothing has happened in that time to make you change your mind. Oh. No, a lot has happened. And I've never felt as loved as you've made me feel. You're running away. You're running away to save yourself from maybe getting hurt. Now, that does not make sense. Now, to me, it does. I'm sorry to hear you're leaving in the morning. See, I was hoping to introduce you to the local historical society. Mm. And my uncle was really looking forward to saying hello again. Yeah, I know we're just missing him, but you know, we really have to... No, no, no. You're not just missing him, didn't you hear? The Boston airport was snowed in last night. So he's not coming home for Christmas? <laughs> not unless it's my dog sled. This is really good coffee. Oh. <sighs> have another cup. You know what? Have a whole pot if you like. Mr. Foster, I think I love you. So, I wanted to tell you that I know two kids that are going to get to meet Santa tomorrow. No! No! Here! Yes! Yes! No! Yes! 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 You, but you will tomorrow. Yes! You and he are going to be the best of friends. Game and a space fighter 
and a new basketball and... Well, no, oh, 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 I'll, I'll tell you what, young man. You write out that list, mail it to me at the North Pole, and, and I'll see what I can do. But Christmas is tomorrow morning. Yes, and that's why we should always plan ahead. Merry Christmas. Oh, yes. Hello, young man. Oh, well, I think I know you. <laughs> Very good. Can't wait your turn. Well, who do we have here? Uh, a couple kids who've waited all their lives to see you, Santa. And a woman who's as happy as the kids are. Can I go first? Yes, of course. Get up there. Girls first. Oh, 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 oh. sit right up here. <laughs> I love you. Excuse me. <laughs> Kids are going through these things like they're candy. What you got there? It's a book. It's about a horse. And the horse rode it himself. I guess anything's possible, right? Merry Christmas, Alana. Thank you. <laughs> Your turn. Go You come up and see me, young man. <laughs> ah. oh. What do you want Santa to bring to you, Aunt JT? It's a secret and I can't tell. Oh, you can tell oh, Santa. Wow. Oh. oh, isn't Nathan adorable? I have to get a picture of him with the kids. Excuse me. Oh, I've got a picture for you, but... It's not the one you want. Tell me there's been some mistake. Yeah, no, uh, I can explain. Please, you have to believe me. If you, if, please, please, just, just tear it up and I will tell you everything, okay? I want to see my mama for Christmas. <laughs> well, that's an easy one. <clears throat> She's right over there. That's not my real mama. Where are the kids? Do they know what happened? The sisters are taking care of them until the social worker from Providence gets here. It should be within the hour. You can't do this to them. How long did you think you could hide here? I mean, from what I've heard about your Aunt Miriam, I mean, if she was still alive today to see what you'd become... I made a mistake. I lied. I misled you. But I did not have a choice. Everybody has a choice. No. Not everybody has that luxury. It killed me to lie. But if it meant keeping those kids safe, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I never lied about my feelings for you. Not one word. Please, you have to believe that. Gerald Foster is here. Do you believe me? Maybe you'll have better luck with your attorney. Send him in, please. Mr. Foster, you're gonna need that suit. Well, yeah, seems Foster. I got here just in time. And I hear Miriam's niece has gotten into some trouble. Well, ask her yourself. Well, where is she? Uh, oh, don't tell me you put her behind bars. I can explain that, too. That imposter has been living in Miriam's house all this time. She said she was the niece, and the name on the probate amendment Well, said... it wasn't Emily Thompson, I can tell you that. I saw the name, Mr. Foster, with my own eyes. The new clerk, the woman over there, showed me the records herself. What new clerk? It's just Hank, like it's always been. Oh, sounds like it's all part of the beer scam. They probably stripped the house of everything of value. I gotta get a move on. The line of kids stretching halfway to Peterman's hardware. Mr. 
Foster is here to see you. You up to it? Might as well get it over with. Alexander? I came to help. To help me? Yeah, it seems like you need someone in your corner right about now. Oh, I do. But your uncle is... Yeah. My uncle, we go to the same family dinners, but that's where the resemblance ends. You know, me, I like to know all the facts before I take sides. Hmm. I'm glad. <laughs> you won't find anything missing, Gerald. Where's Miriam's good silver? In the pantry, where it's always been. Well? No, no, she lied to us. She lied to all of us. You, me, the whole town. Did you ask her why? It doesn't matter. The ends don't justify the means. Not in the eyes of the law, perhaps, but still. She and those kids brought more life to this house than it's known for years. She brought life to you, too. Oh, my life was just fine before she got to Bethlehem. Oh, yes, of course. You had your work. And you had us. And you had your work. It was enough. Then you're too easily satisfied. Now, don't argue with me because I know these things. You need someone to love who loves you right back. And you can't tell me that's not Emily. I better check on Corinna and the children. They're starting to wonder about their mother. About Emily. Did you find the silver? What about her good jewelry? In her dresser, bottom drawer, where it's always been. I don't know about the rest of you, but this is not the way I imagined my Christmas Eve. I appreciate you making yourself available to us, Judge Jakes. I'd like to settle this matter and get the children back to Providence tonight. And I'd like an all-expense-paid trip to Bermuda. That is not likely to happen. Now, I've uh, looked over these charges. I've read your report. Yes, yes, you'll see that I've included the history of neglect and the request for state custody. What part of I read your report did you not understand, Ms. Doyle? No, oh, Ms. Thompson. Seems to me like you've been a very busy woman. Objection, Your Honor. The charges against my client are only alleged. Overruled. This isn't a trial, but I like saying that. Sit down before I remember what a pain you were to babysit. May I say something? Well, never found a way to stop you. Go ahead. Uh, Nathan Blair, the arresting officer, can verify each and every charge against the defendant. Nathan, oh, finally, a voice of reason. Where is he? Uh, he, uh, he intends to be here, Your Honor. And I intend to get back to my dinner before midnight. So, anyone got anything relevant to say? I, uh, I do, Your Honor. You have something to say, say it. Think before you speak, Alexander. Well, um, I would like to cite the case of, uh, Sheffield versus Lewis, 1972. Uh, you see, in this case, it's, it's very clear that, that there's this man, woman, named um, Mrs. Lewis. It's not going to drink itself. Something on your mind tonight? A woman, I bet. <laughs> How'd you guess? It's a bar. The odds are with me. Hey, Everybody I... looks like somebody. You want to tell me about it? Not particularly. You fell in love? You know, you're very good at this. Did she love you back? I thought so. She was just making a fool out of me. It's complicated. That drink will only uh, complicate it more. <laughs> okay. You're the expert. What do you think will help? She made a mistake. I'd say... Forgive her. <laughs> I wish it were that easy. 
You never made a mistake. Not like this one. Well, I'd hope you'd be more original. All of us make our own mistakes in our own ways. But in every case, the solution is the same. I forgive you. Oh, there's a lot of power in those three little words. They can change the world. <laughs> they have. But it's impossible. As a wise man once said, anything is possible. Yes. She told us to lie, and she said it was a game. And how did you feel about that, Alana? Well, at least we got food to eat and a place to sleep. Is that how she got you to lie? Miss Doyle, if you want to interrupt me, I suggest you get your own courtroom. Did she let you go hungry, child? No, I never... No, not in Emily, no. But before, my mom, my real mom, she'd run out of money. And we'd get so hungry, me and my brother. But she didn't care as long as she had her drugs. I know she couldn't help it, but... Your Honor, please don't make her go through this. Do what you want with me, but these kids, they have gone through so much already. Do you mind going on, sweetheart? It's important. Once, my brother, he cried so hard. He started to choke, and, and I didn't know what to do. And I tried to wake my mom up, but she was too... I, I couldn't wake her up, and, and there was nobody around to help my brother, and I thought he was going to die, and I, I didn't know what to do. Don't cry, Lanny. I'm okay. All we want is to stay together in one place with someone who loves us. Someone who talks soft to us when we're scared and says that everything's gonna be okay. Like Aunt Emily does. She loves us. Please don't make her go to jail. She doesn't belong there. And I know, because my real mom does. I understand why you feel like that now. Your mother needs help, and she's getting that. Things will get better with time. Someday, you and your brother will be able to love her again. I'm sure we all agree that this child has suffered enough. And I'm sure that Miss Thompson means well. But her actions... Your Honor, could I have a few words here? Hey, can you guys go outside with Sadie? Mm -hmm. Just for a little bit? Okay. Your Honor, Mr. Blair knows more than anyone how Miss Thompson operates. How she lied repeatedly, and how she impersonated another woman in order to deceive this whole town. Nathan. That's true, Your Honor. I'm convinced this woman would do or say just about anything to get what she wanted. So you see, Judge... But what she wanted was to give those children a chance at a decent life. Well, she lied to put a roof over their heads. And, and in a world that wanted to pull that family apart, she lied to keep them together. Now, I'm not saying that lying's ever right, but... But in her position, I'd like to think I'd do the same thing. Emily Thompson is the most loving woman. She's the best mother I've ever seen. And all she needed was a, was a support system that worked for her. Your Honor, I have to protest. Yeah, but he's your witness, Miss Doyle. Now she's got one. If she'll accept it. I mean, she belongs here in Bethlehem. And the kids belong with her. She doesn't even have a place to live. Yes, she does. She can live with me. 
she'll forgive me. And if she'll have me, because the truth is I love her. And I want to marry her. We should let them handle this alone for now. Come on. She took the children without any authorization. Absolutely. Sure. Very good. Yes. Well, what about the breaking and entering? She mother? used the house without permission. Get a sample of some water here. Quiet! 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 Kids, please stop talking. You know what? I think we can go in now. Court is adjourned. Ah. Oh. Oh. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Congratulations. <clears throat> By the way, I also do weddings. <laughs> So this was our miracle. This is how it happened for us. It was the most perfect Christmas, the best holiday ever. And it was just beginning. Whenever we talked about it later, Emily always said that that season was a special season, a season for miracles. From the Hallmark Hall of Fame collection. It's good to be home, doesn't it? Yeah. She's gonna go out. Why couldn't it have been me? It's never too early. Say, would it be possible for me to choose a Christmas tree? If I can put a smile on that family's face, I'm gonna do it. To celebrate Christmas. Let's just say you'll be better by the time we have our first big snowball. Sam Elliott, John Corbett, and Sarah Paulson. November Christmas. Coming up next on Hallmark Movies and Mystery.